We've been running the wrong oil in our discovery for at least five years. That's what you think. That didn't get an oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> the car has, in my opinion, developed a new noise. I'm, I'm violating, violating <laughs> the Land Rover manual. Oh, the Bible. I, I thought we were just doing what the Land Rover manual well, says. So we are trying to prevent another disaster. The oil pressure is just not enough and we are kind of worried about that engine failure the TDV6 is famous about. Oh my god, I think somebody stole them. Wait. So 25 minutes later. Two hours later. So yeah, I already showed you the weird noise it's making. The car has, in my opinion, developed a new noise. It's not on the other side, this, this noise, so it's only here. Let me show you again. It's like a little rattling or a clicking noise. Let's go over to the driver's side. Here the noise is also, but not as bad as on the other side. So you need to pop the hood, the bonnet, I'm sorry. We're gonna dismantle the air suspension like we always do. And we're not gonna install a switch. It's a 10 second thing to take that fuse yeah. out. According to my research, we've been running the wrong oil in this car for at least five years. And we all know that the TDV6 is a very unforgiving engine. If you don't give it love around the clock and you maintain it every day and you don't drive it at full moon, it will fail on you. I completed my research, okay? You guys know you get straightforward, honest, non-rocket science German precision answers. Maybe not Japanese precision, but better than Chinese precision. In my original Discovery 3 owner's manual here from Vera's car, it says clearly in there, 5W30 ACR B1 or B3. Why is this wrong, what I'm doing? Because when I was choosing my oil in the past, I was simply going onto the Kestrel oil finder and I typed in Discovery 3 non-DPF 2006 2.7 liter. And it came back with the 5W30 A5. So does the oil finder from Liquimoli from Mobile One, from Valvoline, and from Total. So my conclusion is these oil finders on the internet do not go back to the original manufacturer's specification. They go back to the latest product they want to sell you. And this is wrong because the ACR A5B5 oil was invented after this car was built. When this car was built, the ACR B1 or B3 was the standard. And this is what Land Rover printed into their manual. When you read now the small printed language on those oil finder websites, they all tell you to go by your owner's manual and not by their website. So if a oil manufacturer does not have the product which belongs into your vehicle, they will not say, we don't have this on our website. No, 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 no. They will give you whatever they think is the best out of their product lineup. And this made me choose since 2016, since we have this car, the A5 oil. It's not the end of the world, but it clearly does have a reduced high tension, high shear force rating. If you compare now what Land Rover is recommending in their handbook from 2006 with what the Kestrel website is proposing, you find the following difference. Me being a German, I think this small tiny difference is significant on this kind of an engine. I got the ACR ratings for A, B and C. Those are all their normal duty engines for gasoline and diesel. A and B is gasoline and diesel and C is diesel with modern 
particle filter technology. The A3B3, what was recommended in the manual, has a HTHS viscosity that's measured in millipascal greater or equal to 3.5. The HTHS viscosity of the A5B5 is 2.9 to 3.5. So they dropped the viscosity in the high temperature range of the oil. HTHS is measured usually around 150 degrees versus the SAE specification is measured at 100 degrees. So if you have an SHE 5W30, the 30 represents the viscosity at 100 degrees. And because this is not sufficient of a measurement tool, in modern engines you also need to measure the viscosity at a higher temperature so they've chosen 150 degrees and that's what they call the HTHS high temperature high shear viscosity that is not really applicable to all components in your engine like for example your drive trains or your big end and your main bearings they do not really see that kind of temperature but for example, the cylinder bores or the camshaft, they do see this kind of a temperature. So in my opinion, I should have looked, just like probably most of you, much earlier into my manual, and I should have used always the ACR B1 or B3 and not what Kestrel and all the other oil finders on the internet are recommending. Do you need to change your oil now if you find out you're doing it the same way as I do and I'm changing my oil today even though it's brand new? And the answer is then no you don't. There is really only a minute difference in between those two specifications but I think if your car ages over a certain kilometer range you should stay away from those modern A5, B5 oils. This is basically the conclusion I have based on my research on the internet. That's weird that we are not doing what Land Rover recommended. <laughs> this is nothing you see so easy. You have to research it until, you know, and it took me a day to learn enough about oils to find out that the diesel engine has a 5W30 just like the website recommends, but the ICR specification is B1 or B3. And when I go back here to B3, A1 already is not on the list anymore because it's so old. And I compare this writing here, it says greater 3.5 millipascal. The A5B5 says in most descriptions that the engine needs to be designed to this specification. And this engine can't be designed to this specification because it simply the oil didn't exist when the engine was built. They get definitely a minus point from me, but as you can see, I'm still using their product because <laughs> oil needs to have a certain quality control behind the process. And you need to use oil from someone who knows how to make oil, even so they screw up their website. There are ingredients in these oils which need to be mixed in under certain temperatures and under certain pressures and in certain procedures. And if this isn't done right, these ingredients don't really get the flavor of the oil to be what it's supposed to be. I think Castrol, because it's recommended by Land Rover, is a good choice. I have no affiliation opposite. I hate these guys. The website has gray letters on white background, which is not good for people with poor vision because it's hard to see. Why would you design your website with gray letters on white background? What? The second topic in this video is today that I made this impossible choice to go from 5W30 to 5W40. I'm violating. Oh my God. I'm, I'm violating. violating the Land Rover manual, the oh, Bible. I and thought we were just doing what the Land Rover manual. Instead of sticking with the 5W30 oil, what they recommend, which is this water kind of oil, what they use in modern engines to fulfill the emissions requirements. Okay, this is why you have such oils. You can put this in a Toyota, dissolve it with water and it will run. This is a misdesigned Ford diesel engine where all other nations had their hands in and the engine is too small, too compact. 
too powerful, more powerful than even a modern Jeep diesel engine with three liters. Okay, so this engine needs to have the correct oil. Seriously, it flows like water when it's hot. So it took me only seven years until I finally made up my mind we're going away to Six 5W30. Years. I also get so many questions, what oil are we using? And so many times I answered, we're using the oil what the Kestrel oil finder on the internet recommends. So I honestly apologize to all of you who got this completely wrong answer from me. Fill in 5W40. This is what my answer should have been. But everybody needs to decide this on their own. Everybody should do their own research. We are not responsible for any further engine damages. You watch our videos. It's your own fault. We have zero experience. I'm not an automotive engineer. I'm an electrician. I know that plus is minus and red is black. That's where my knowledge ends. Oh, so he knows I about know. balancing. Believe me. I can make myself sound smart, okay? <laughs> but that's only because I got a German accent in English. Citroen engines have this oil recommended from the get-go. A SIA B3 or B4 in the Total Activia Synthetic 9000 5W40 in warmer climates. We are warmer we climates. We are warmer climates, okay? Yeah. Guys in Australia, we are warmer climates. Warmer climates are where the temperature doesn't drop below zero over many days. So don't go, you guys are not warmer climates, you're wearing real shoes and no sandals. Colder climates are the people up in Norway. They wear shoes around the entire year. In the United States, they have oil change places like car washes, you know? You drive in, you get your oil changed, and you drive out and you get a lollipop at the, at the end of the oil change and you are sitting inside and it takes like 15 minutes in the fall time we always got the oil recommended for the winter and in spring we got the oil recommended for the summertime the winters are really cold and the summers are really hot in michigan yes sorry for the background noise but my my neighbors all drive their tractors around on a saturday like this we're gonna change over to the 5W40. The reason is that Vera is complaining about a ticking noise inside the engine. I okay. showed it to you. Okay, I installed here an additional port on, oh my, my, God. on my distributor where I have my internal oil gauge connected here because this thing is not very reliable, okay? It shows the fluctuations, but it doesn't really have an accurate readout, I think. So using this external oil pressure gauge, I did a test run up to full temperature on the car and it was alarming low. This is quite low, I think. We're gonna go uphill for a bit. And the internal gauge shows just a little bit below one bar. The one I hooked up here shows basically not even one bar. That's not very high what it shows here. I remember I always had in idle something like 0.8 0.85 and 0.7 is the critical border limit according to the manufacturer's specification and right now the idle oil temperature is clearly only 0.6 no the idle oil pressure so something happened between our last big maintenance job where we replaced the oil pump and now in order to tackle this problem we're gonna take the oil out look for debris if the oil pump would have disintegrated, you guys remember we used the cheap Phi oil pump, which oh I do not recommend. The bottom line is, if we find debris in the filter, which we did not find during our last big maintenance job, it was an absolute yeah. Two months ago. filter, yeah. plus we took the oil pan down and we looked for debris inside the oil nothing. pan. Nothing. And there was nothing. The car was like new. And if we find any kind of particles today, this would be extremely alarming. My intention is to artificially raise the oil pressure. So we put in instead of the W30, we put in, in the W40, which gives it a minute step more in oil pressure. I gotta explain why I've chosen the 5W40 and what kind I've chosen. And you look here at the ICA specification, right here in the corner you can see it's a CRC3. 
a mid saps oil mid saps means it has medium sulfide ash content which is good for diesel particle filters high temperature high shear strengths of 3.5 millipascal just like the former a3 b3 specification bottom line is this is a c3 a cr spec oil it has the high temperature high shear strengths what i want and it's 5w40 you got to choose your own oil okay instead of writing me messages that this is wrong ah oh, did i stress you so much that you got to drink now an <laughs> iso <laughs> lemonade yeah it's got electrolyte that's what i wanted to say <laughs> why are we not putting in b1 or b2 or a5 or b5 okay. a1 b1 oil is no longer available just like the a3 b3 oil will phase out very soon i think as time passes on, they drop the older specifications and they come up with newer specifications. And in the long run, these oils will become thinner, so lower viscous, less pollutions and will cause less emissions. All this comes at a price and that price is always durability of your engine. And as modern engines are designed, they can scope with this oil. But we're looking at a vehicle which has an engine which was designed in 1999. Really? And they first got it, you know, in a prototype stage around 2004. And 2005, it launched in the first vehicles. I think that was the longest oil lecture you can watch on the internet. So we're doing an oil change now and we can't put it in the pit because of the rooftop tent and rooftop box. <coughs> Really? Oh my god. Okay, this is good enough. I hate that noise. Of course, we have to take off a skid blade. See? Very simple. Look at that. Oh, oh shit. shit. Oh, not this is not good. Oh man. It's oil. It's oil. So what? All I can say is that it has an oil leak. It's only very minute okay it's not as much as it was but something is leaking Shit. that means the repair we did last time did not solve this problem well at least not the oil leak let me wipe off this oil it's really not a lot definitely not dry so one thing i recommend to you is when you drain your oil use an open oil pan like this even if it's a little messier the reason is because you can look at your oil if you have this clean ahead of time you can later on search for particles which got flushed out of your oil pan into this oil versus when you drain it directly into one of those sealed containers like these, you can't. This is uh, something Toyota people would use. They don't need to look at their oil. <laughs> but Land Rover people, they need to look at their oil and feel it and possibly taste it, okay? And go through there with a magnet and look for debris. I do so, the magnet, you do the tasting. So now have we you got... seen my nice little winch? Remember that? I still have the plans. You loosen your oil filter now. A couple of turns, it pulls that little plug out of your oil filter housing and that lets the oil in the housing drain, okay? When it's loose now, I gotta give that some time. What did we do? Huh? Been driving around in the mud. We don't have much. So here, you go and tighten this and you go like click click. You didn't even use a torque. Yeah, because I made the click click myself. Oh my god, that Can you I go think our, our oil I'm pan is too small. In, ex it's a 5 liter pan for 5.6 liters. <laughs> oh my god. So where's my magnet? I take that magnet. Take that. Ah. Swipe the entire bottom. You gotta swipe the entire bottom. I am. Let me see. This is a metal particle. This is a metal particle, you see it? Yeah. See? Oh. One. Because I'm so strong. Yeah. Okay, let's see. It's all of one. We need to use a magnet. Mm, so many. Four. 
That is not good. We have to take the oil pan off. See, there's nothing in here. I'm not so concerned. Well, maybe it flushed it out. No. What? Very, very, very fine particles, but not as big as the ones we found. The biggest content was already in the oil we pulled out. If there are particles in here, they actually remain in the oil pan because they can't get over this hump here. Um, what, 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 what? That was, was a piece it? of gasket. Oh my god. We had particles in the filter, two or three at least, and we found some in the oil pan, two or three. They were metal, they were magnetic. So I would say, put the thing back together. We put the 5W40 oil in. If the oil pressure raises in idle again above 0 0.7, we do nothing. If it stays below 0 0.7, we'll pull your engine out and rebuild it. Because mm. you got a mall crawler to drive around. Oh, okay, because next week I want to go to Eindhoven and in May I want to go to yeah. Berlin. And I want to have content for my videos. So, you know, luckily a Land Rover never lets you down. Oh my God. Yeah. What the hell? You know, if this would be a Toyota, you would be filming making coffee for a year. Yeah. Maybe for two. That is like the dumbest place. Oh, I don't want to get a broken one. They are so strong that when you drop them and they get attached to something, they break. This is a high strength magnet. And just for the heck of it, we put it in there. Yeah. yeah. So some pen to extension bolts, 10 Newton meters. seen this a million times okay but people still show it in other channels you see them making coffee over and over on our channel you see us changing the oil filter over and over so I guess that's a fair trade there we go yeah and then you oil it a little mm -hmm. <laughs> that's enough into the center of the oil filter it goes in here yeah Oh, in that minute hole? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> you know, I don't need yeah. a step. <laughs> okay, I use the step. <laughs> Put this in there. There. Just like making coffee. Okay. Put this in. Up. One click. That's when the filter snaps into this housing. And seat it. Don't fumble around with a small funnel, okay? No, it's good. Put that funnel in here. Magic new life elixir, which is oil for you Toyota drivers. Well, actually, we saw a pretty cool groupie yesterday. It had water in it. <laughs> oh, yeah, you always listen to a splattering underneath the vehicle. That means you forgot some plug. <laughs> yeah, but we actually talked it to 23 Newton meters, so we didn't forget it. That's five liters. We always carry an extra liter of oil in our spare parts I think department. I need to carry now an extra engine. Yeah, oh man, you are so stressing me. It, it looks, looks nice like honey. Bigger. Actually, it looks like amber. 5.6. There we go. One step, two steps. He's gonna start the engine now. Ah, really smooth. Yeah, 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 but, yeah that but that is also what happened on Fabian. That is yeah. normal. Well, it was because the oil filter was still quite empty. Yeah, yeah. You cannot pre-fill the oil filter. So he stopped the engine unexpectedly. Yeah. I stopped the engine unexpectedly. Yes. Okay. So <gasps> it's coming, it's coming. Oh, oh my God, what did you do? <laughs> you get a rag. <laughs> okay, oh, it ran down here. Oh. Uh, so don't forget that rag. Remember the one guy who wrote us who forgot his rag in the... <laughs> oh my God. I feel and the turbo sucked in yeah. the rag. And but... I gave him from Amazon a link with one of those grab things. And, I told and the him endoscope. To an, an endoscope camera and one of those grab things and go in and get all the pieces out. And that's what yeah. we would do. One of those long holes. Now it's 
it is, yeah? Yeah. But there's still oil coming. You now should it's have read that before. Huh? Oh my god. Yeah, it's good. Right here. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah no, we have to get some tape. You know, but we go into the mall. So we should what? take the mall crawler. We go and get paint. Yeah. So that's good enough, yeah? Well, that's where the oil spill is happening always. Oh, look at that. My bed is working. Now the rattling noise is not here. still need to get the car down. Oh, the green one is the old one, as a new one. You pull the check stand out. The air suspension fuels. Red is black and plus is minus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the engine is warm now, no? It's at 1.2, so it's definitely higher than it was before. It's one. It's better than before. <laughs> so, it's more than one. Oh my god, it's all rusty. <gasps> Shit! So now we check. We got now full oil temperature. So the diagnostic unit says 86 degrees, 3,500 RPM. We should have 1.9 bar. I have 1.9 bar. So this one was 1.8. That one had 1.9. No, that noise is gone. It's not here. Indeed. On camera, so you can compare. Put your ear on there. You can hear actually how the crankshaft turns. Isn't that amazing? Oh my god. <laughs> so everybody put his ear right here on the hood. How do you know it's a crankshaft? And try to store that in your memory so you know in future if you got a problem. Oh it's my amazing god. how you can hear. You can hear I can hear the left camshaft, the right camshaft, it's right here. Okay, now I hear the crankshaft. I oh now I hear piston number one up front. That's our home improvement store and we're gonna go shopping now. So that's it for this week's video. If you keep following us, you will find out what happens to this engine after we found the first metal particle and after we found a little minute drop in, in oil, oil pressure. pressure. Now we're gonna run 5W40 for the first time and uh, you're gonna find out how that goes. Maybe that cures it for some time. As usual, we thank our Patreons a lot for their support. Yeah. They make these videos every week possible. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please think about subscribing. And as always, in any case, do not unsubscribe. Yes. Oh, and also special thanks to any fascinated Toyota driver who made it all the way to the end of this video. We really appreciate it and we love you guys. <laughs> so, yeah. What would be a Land Rover if there would be no Toyotas? We would actually think that a Land Rover is a reliable vehicle. And we'll see you next Sunday. And Christian has to put on new wallpaper. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's <laughs> not that tricky. Yeah. So, so you, you got it all soaked for about 10 minutes. And then I open it up here, yeah. Yeah, you don't need to do a how-to, yeah, Land yeah, Rover channel, not a how-to renovate your house. <laughs> this is a how-to, okay? So, this is how you put it on. Get it nicely on one side even. Don't stretch the paper too much, because your last row is going to be all crooked. You get a detailed shot how precise this is. I pull this down, yeah. let it just hang there, and now I use my brush to wipe this in.
to match exactly the other row. If there are very tiny wrinkles, they will even out when it's drying, okay? Because it's soaked. Yeah. If it wouldn't be soaked, the wrinkles would stay. Yeah. And you gotta make sure your room, so don't open the windows or anything, just yeah. leave the room closed. No air circulation. It needs to be humid in here slowly. So I just wipe them down like this. Yeah. And this is heavy wallpaper. So here I need to also soak the seams before I put on the next row. Yeah. <laughs> so here when you got something like this, what? you just use a pencil, you scribe the line, peel it back off, cut it with your scissors. And also the most accurate. Look at that scissor. See, it's the biggest, baddest scissor I could use for yeah. sewing and it lies in our... There's unfortunately a piece of our molding missing here. Yeah, because, I because ran of high speed internet. There is the high speed internet underneath <laughs> here, so we'll cut this open. And it's not our living room, so yeah. <laughs> he didn't close it up. Yeah, there is the high speed internet in the wall. So let's see if he measured correctly. So, see, the last one, you leave a little bit of a bead overlapping here. Yeah. And then you do it exactly the same way. See, use my pencil and boom, just cut this corner in the same way. There, see? Well, here I cut this now up. We no. changed this bracket from the differential mount on your Freelander four times. Yes, I know. And I think we actually <laughs> did it five times and I threw away the first. <laughs> four times. You want to get rid of all four? Yes, I'm done with them. No, let's leave one for my Hall of Fame. One, A one. maximum broken one. No. Look at that. It always made a clonking sound. And we knew exactly what we had to do. 